yourself Michelle Loves Books. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day two of Because We Can Read-a-thon. Today's challenge is to pack a bag. So I'm packing a bag as if I were going to the Shadowhunter Academy to become a shadow hunter. The first thing are clothes. Always have to start with clothes. So I have found a few outfits that I would like to get. Mostly black clothes, pretty much a theme. <laughs> I think that these either black like leggings uh, jegging style pants would be perfect. I will be doing a lot of running and a lot of like physical stuff so they need to be really comfortable but they also need to look really good and I just I also like these really kind of like loose fitting tops. Definitely a leather jacket. I just really want to make sure that I feel like I look good and I feel like I fit in and I look cool and I look like a shadow hunter. I really get my style inspirations from Clary Fairchild and Isabel Lightwood. However, they tend to wear heels all the time and honestly, I don't know how they do what they do in heels. So I would be wearing flats and I really like either sneakers or just some flat flat style boots. Next, I would need some work some outfits that are more like workout style so i really like like the yoga pants and loose fitting like athletic shorts and tank tops now i'm not really one for pajamas but since i will be bunking with other people i think i'd probably like to find some cute pajamas also it gets really cold so i really like these sets this kind of makes me think of buffy the vampire slayer in her sushi pajamas so I think something like that would be really cute and also really cozy. Again, I'm not really one for slippers, but on a place like this where maybe you need to use the restroom in the middle of the night, gonna want some slippers. Also, I think some really cozy socks would be perfect. Again, it gets really cold and my feet always end up getting the coldest first. Next, I really need an extra blanket. And I found this really cute hooded blanket on Etsy, which by the way, the socks and all of these things that I have found, I will leave links to below. But yeah, these just sound so nice. Now, I don't know what kind of towel they might provide for you after taking a shower, but maybe a towel and also so that somebody else doesn't accidentally use your towel. So I think I would like to bring my own towel. Some other essentials that I thought I would like to bring is maybe some sort of my own type of snacks and food it's because I heard that the food is horrible. The only thing I could really think of right now is maybe bringing some of my own ramen noodles. I just figured they're pretty lightweight and easy to pack and I could probably find some hot water to cook them. Also, in addition to that, I feel like I'm gonna have some really sore muscles and be really exhausted and tea is the perfect thing to just help me relax at the end of the day. Also, I am just trash without coffee, so I think I would take some instant coffee. Unfortunately, my electric kettle wouldn't work in Alicante, as most electronics don't work there, So, I'm, but I'm pretty sure that I could find some way to get some hot water. Entertainment. It gets really boring. And I personally would prefer to stay out of all of the catty BS with some of the elitists being rather rude and teasing and gossiping about some of the mundanes. So I really don't want to be a part of that. And But unfortunately, I can't have any cell phones as they just aren't even going to work there anyways. Or like my tablet to read on. Because again, electronics just wouldn't work there because of the wards that are put up around Alicante. Disrupt them. So I would take some books. A lot of books. I think it's going to be really hard to choose what books to take though. And I can't pack my entire bookshelf. So I'd have to be very strategic about what kind of books to pack. I'm going to have a lot of time at night to read. I just felt like maybe this would be a really good time to bring books that are just really long and maybe take a lot of concentration and aren't going to be like quick fast reads. So and I just want to make sure that I have plenty of pages because I know how much I can read and I don't want to run out of books. So here are the books that I found. They're Well they're pretty much the longest books that I own. <laughs> Not even all of the longest books I own. So here would be the books that I would take with me to Shadowhunter Academy. So first of all, I think it'd be a really good time to start Game of Thrones because this is just a really dense high fantasy book and they're really long. This one's like 800 pages and this one's over a thousand pages. Next, I think Strange the Dreamer would be really nice to start as well. 
Not only have I just been dying to read this book and I just keep getting distracted with other things, but it's really long. It's magical realism and I've just heard beautiful things about it. If it is what I think it is, then this might be a really good one that I would even reread right away. The writing is just supposed to be so lyrical and beautiful, so I think this would be a really good book to take. And it's pretty damn long. Well, at least it feels pretty damn long. Well, it looks bigger than it is. It's 530 pages. Next up is another book that's just like huge. I think it's been intimidating me. It's got a lot of pages and it's another kind of like magical realism and it seems like it has a whole lot of things in it. Honestly, I don't even know a whole lot about it. I will try to read the back, but this is 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. I've been dying to read some of his stuff. I really want to read, this is the only book I have of his, but um, I've been dying to read his work. I've heard just amazing things about it. But this one is Love Story, Mystery, Fantasy, and Novel of Self-Discovery, Dystopia, and Two Rival George Orwells. 1Q84 is a tremendous feat of imagination for one of our most revered contemporary writers. So this book is very long. I actually didn't know. Um, there are some other editions where they've actually broken this up into two parts. So there's two books. So there are 1,157 pages in this book. And I've also heard that this one's kind of warpy. This one might be a really good one to actually read a second time as well, just to make sure that you really understand what he's trying to do with this. The next one is kind of very, very intriguing to me. Also a very dense, big book. And that is The Company of the Dead, David J. Kowalski. Honestly, I picked this up for 50 cents. This one is about time travel airships, the Titanic, Roswell. Kowalski builds a decidedly original creature that blends military, science fiction, conspiracy theory, alternate history, and even a dash of romance. Exciting action, twisty and ingenious characterization, and complicated time travel plotting deftly handled. So yeah, I think this would be very interesting read and mix it up with a little bit of historical, uh, science fiction-y, so we can mix up genres just a little bit as well. And lastly, another super big book is I felt like I really needed like a classic for when I like want to slow things down or something like that. And so I've picked up Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mom. Now I have to admit though, I heard about this book first years ago when Buffy goes to college and her first friend that she makes says that this is his um, that this book is his like security blanket that he takes everywhere and when she goes to check in on him he he's left his security blanket in the desk drawer in the side table next to his bed and he has disappeared so she knows that somebody was lying that he did not just give up on college and leave somebody has taken him because he would not have left this book but it just made me think that this book of all the books there is to choose that this character chose this book to keep by his bedside so I just have always wanted to know what this book is about. I did find a copy of it quite a while ago and I didn't realize how big it was. This is a very big book. Well I guess it actually isn't that many pages. It says 660 pages. It just looks like it's a lot more than that. Look at this. Isn't that so weird? It's so weird how deceiving books can be. Like these look exactly the same, but this literally has twice as many pages. I guess these pages are just thicker. This book, I actually kind of forgot what it was about. One of the most widely read novels of the 20th century, Somerset's masterpiece of human bondage gives a harrowing depiction of unrequited love. Philip Carey, a sensitive orphan born with a club foot, finds himself in desperate need of passion and inspiration. He abandons his studies to travel, first to Heidelberg and then to Paris where he nurses ambitious ambitions of becoming a great artist. Philip's youthful idolism erodes, however, as he comes face to face with his own mediocrity and lack of impact on the world. That's why I wanted this book. As he comes face to face with his own mediocrity and lack of impact on the world, after returning to London to study medicine, he becomes wildly infatuated with Mildred, a vulgar, tawdry waitress, and begins a doomed love affair that will change the course of his life. 
First published in 1915, semi-autobiographical, the of human bondage comprise, combines the values left over from the Victorian era with the prevailing irony and despair of early 20th century unsettlement, oh, unsentimental yet bursting with deep feeling. Of human bondage remains mom, mom, moms, I do not know how to say his last name, most complete statement of the importance of physical spiritual liberty a theme that resounds today more loudly than ever. And of course, I can't forget my Shadowhunters Codex. Definitely have cannot forget this one. So these are the books that I would take with me to Shadowhunter Academy in addition to all the other things that I would pack. I don't think that that is too much. My, my bags might be kind of weighted down though. That is heavy, actually. That would keep me busy. So yeah, we have a couple of fantasy a couple of magical realism. One of them is a classic with love story and contemplating your let your place in this world. And then the other one is kind of mixed media traveling in the past and things like that. So I think that I have covered a lot of different genres, got lots of pages to keep me busy. So I think I've done very well. And that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.